Hello friends and welcome to the next episode of CCM's Uptake. I'm Jeremy Burleson, Director of Community Engagement with CCM. As always, joined by my co-pilot here, Ed Hosack, Executive Director of our ministry. Um, and for the first time in the history of CCM's Uptake, we have a special guest. We're joined by Roxana Books, Program Manager for our Financial Assistance Program. And that's exactly what we're here today to talk about in today's episode is financial assistance. For those that recall, in our last episode, when we touched on the 40th anniversary of the ministry, we, we mentioned financial assistance. Since the inception of the ministry, CCM has actually offered financial assistance. We're going to dig in today a little bit deeper as to exactly what that means, uh, why we do it the way we do it, how we do it the way we do it, but and also ways that you as a community can invest and help support our efforts moving forward over the next uh, 10 to 15 years here within, within the ministry. We're excited to be here. So Ed, I'm going to kick it over to you to get us started today. Tell us a little bit about why CCM does financial assistance and the way we do it in particular. Well, thank you, Jeremy. You know, we know that that families who come to us for financial assistance are, are seeking that immediate relief from some financial crisis yeah, that's, yeah. that's causing them anxiety or putting them in a, a difficult circumstance. But our intent is to not only uh, address the immediate crisis at hand, but also to look beyond this crisis and to help this, in, this particular household um, ensure that they're not going to be in this same situation sure. uh, in the very near future. So Roxana and her team will will listen, yeah, um, listening to the family, uh, explain their situation, uh, trying to identify the specific crisis that occurred that, that put them in this situation, um, seeking to understand um, the family's financial position and, and how they use money. Uh, and then to begin to talk about the bigger picture sure. and ultimately asking that family, expecting that family to take personal responsibility Absolutely. for uh, actively engaging in the solution. Sure. Uh, Roxanne, I'm, I'm going to kick it over to you. So, so Ed touched a little bit on, on the, the way we do it at the ministry, the way we do financial assistance. I want you to dig into how it's done. More specifically, it's not just about cutting a check to Concord Utilities for one of our clients. For us, it's much deeper than that. Why don't you touch a little bit about, uh, uh, on, the, on the how and then the effect of the how. Sure. Um, so with each application or request that we receive, we contact that person directly. And we really, our first question is, what happened? You know, what's going right, on? Because right. we have to get a good feel of not only what's brought Excellent. them here, but the background that's brought them there as well and then that helps my team and myself to be able to say okay we can help but here's also some really great community resources that's going to help with the child care that you missed yeah. or that you caused you to miss work that's going to help you you know advance more in your job because you just need a stronger resume and here's a really good community resource that'll help you with that yeah. so yes we are addressing the community the the direct need, but we're also trying to engage them in other community resources that can help build them going further. Yeah, so sure. that's a, a really large picture of how we do what we do you know, on a daily basis. Right. So one of the, uh, you know, as I look at financial assistance and I have a deeper understanding in my time here, the intention, albeit a short-term intention, is obviously to you know uh, make bills be current, rent, utilities, etc. But it's beyond that, right? The intention is beyond just that initial. It's it's to prevent loss, and it's what are some other aspects of that? Just to prevent loss, yes, but to do what with folks in their homes? So of course we want to keep people in keep their people, home. You know, I, I'm trying to prevent them from becoming homeless. Yeah. You know, that that's the ultimate goal. You know, sure. whether that's keeping the lights on or whether that's literally just keeping a roof over their head, that's the end goal, yeah. you know, that we try and work for every day. Now, part of that is, you know, as well as, well as the helping them with the immediate need of keeping yeah. them in their home, but it's also, 
you know, that future engagement. And so I I do indeed hope and plan, and it is part of, you know, just the growth of this ministry and the area of my program, that we're going to take those financial clients that we're engaging with on a short-term basis and try and engage them in the future CCM programs that we're building and constructing and putting into place now. Um, So that's really the ultimate goal where we're addressing an immediate need, but really trying to meet those later in life needs. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Ed, I'm going to kick it over to you. This, what we do at CCM, the ministries that we provide do not happen without partnerships. So, so talk a little bit about specifically in the financial assistance realm, uh, what, what, how important they are and potentially, you know, some of, some of our community partners there. Mm -hmm. Well, while Roxana and her team have become tremendously efficient at understanding the crisis, identifying the need, determining what it's going to take to work alongside of this family um, so that they can move beyond the crisis. Um, They can also begin to identify aspects of need or or shortfalls within this family's um, experience that we're not qualified to instruct, that we're not qualified to, to, to bring to them. And that's where our community partnerships are so critical. And we rely on the folks who can help to strengthen their employability yeah. or who can help them, uh, whether it's medical, nutritional, mental health issues, transportation, whatever those are. And so uh, while they are meeting the immediate need, part of their focus and much of our new strategic plan yeah. is about engaging those partners, yes. uh, uh, wrapping them around this family, if you will, so that this family can, can begin to feel the stability they need to move on financially and and move on to maybe even some yeah. some greater opportunities that's awesome and last in our last episode friends we we talked about ccm being a very adaptable organization and an adaptable ministry we certainly had to adapt ourselves at the beginning of 2020 right roxana oh, yes. so when when the pandemic hit uh we, we had to adapt quickly talk a little bit about that and also talk about by god's grace what we were able to do through our financial system. Sure. Um, So we made a very quick decision to take our long-time model of in-person, in-the-room interviewing to an online model where they applied online, they could apply by phone, but all of our interviews went went on the phone is what I'm trying to say. Um, And that was a huge change for us, but we identified that in that change, we gained something there because we gained the flexibility and the feasibility to start speaking with clients whenever you know they're on their lunch break whenever yeah. their kids are in the other room doing that virtual learning yeah. um, so it opened up a whole nother group of population that we weren't able to serve yeah, and now sure. we can going forward so that's really exciting um, and by god's grace through all of the just hectic life that everyone was experiencing <laughs> we were able to still serve our community and yeah. We put out over a million dollars in just COVID assistance alone. Oh, wow. And that's not in addition to our normal general assistance funds that we budget for and assist our community with sure. every year. Yeah. So that was a huge, just breathtaking moment for me to realize that my team and I, did, we did that. And yeah. we could only do it with God's hand right there with us Absolutely. every single day. And just, it gives me chills talking yeah. about yeah. it right now. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Only that uh, our community responded yes. um, in such a way that uh, allowed us uh, to be in the place we were and to do the work we did. And we yeah. are very grateful yeah. to the community for that. Absolutely. Praise God. Praise God. Friends, thank you as always. We, uh, we, we have really enjoyed being able to kind of bring these topics to the table for you guys and, and help you understand better why we do what we do here. And uh, we're thankful to have our special guest, Roxana, and hopefully she'll be able to come back and join us for another episode soon. Um, as always, join us, join us back here in a couple of weeks at CCM's YouTube channel uh, for another episode that we, that we will tackle as it relates to community involvement. And as always, share this across your social channels so we can help spread that good word. Thanks for being here.